most awaited moment for me because we have waited for almost 3 months um not that you know this person has uh, tried to act pricey it's just that during covid times uh, sometimes things didn't work out and finally i am so excited to welcome the guest for today his name is shogato gupta um i think uh, because he's so pr shy and uh, not really all over media uh, not probably many people have seen him but of course his work uh, speaks volumes about him as well so he's the managing director and chief executive officer of marico limited uh he joined marico way back in 2004 a very loyal person i am a person who led loyalty for two organizations so kudos to you and um, then of course he joined as the head of marketing and got elevated to the ceo for india business in 2007 and then 2014 he took over as the managing director uh needless to mention that of course he's a dynamic leader he's responsible for driving company's growth and strengthening its uh, presence um it's not because it's written like that or it's told to me to speak like that his all his colleagues whom i've communicated to or with so far speak volumes about him uh they swear by him they say there is nobody like him so far in the organization who's healthy organization tied who's he's such a people's person uh and he it really works so that they all grow together welcome shogato this podcast focuses also on a very crucial topic which is the second act the person behind this designation the values that you hold the learnings that you bring so that people who are hearing us can take away a lot from your life uh your life learnings in fact and how can we be a better version of ourselves or a better person so uh welcome to this platform there's a lot of learning that we are looking forward to getting from you today so are you ready thank you thank you <laughs> so um jogatu you can say something more than just thank you <laughs> we'll no, i think it's a pleasure i think as, as, as yeah. i said it's uh, it's extremely interesting to do a podcast like this because you normally do things on business and the organization so it's i think it's different and i'm looking forward to this Yes and I'm going to take out a lot of personal shog shogoto here and uh, a very little of the business because business is roaring and uh, you have like you know grown the company many many folds and it's all over that is what people know this podcast is all about what people don't know so of course you're from IIM and uh, all the IIMs have something very brilliant because they strategize everything so well so the art of strategy has it helped you also in your personal life so i think it's not about strategy i think uh, it's about making the right choices in life and whenever uh, whether it's uh, choices in career choices in relationships choices you make in your personal life i always believe that you need to have a framework for making choices but i think i have always done that uh, based on my liking and not because of either peer pressure or what are supposed to do and i think that uh, one clarity helps me i think a lot no so um you know of course you're talking about choices but do you think everybody has this ability or um the strength or the power to make choices because uh, i'll give you my example like i always wanted to do something properly but every time that i wanted to do something on my own something stopped me because it was all about children growing up it was all about first looking after if those needs were fulfilled and then looking after what i needed to do having a support system of course i have a fantastic support system and i can now do what i want to do as well but do you really think that people have this thing of like the power of making choices i think you can make a choice when you have uh, when you need to prioritize and make some sacrifices i think since you talked about you know support systems you know so both me and my wife we had very very we used to have very long hours very challenging careers and and i think we had a kid growing up we didn't have a strong support system but i think we made some choices which is basically on weekends we ensured that we give 100% to our kid which made a choice which is i we didn't have that much of a social life on choice mm-hmm. we made a choice in terms of for example i still not started golf because still on the weekends i like to spend time with the family 
so i think for every choice you make you have to deselect something and i think it's very very important to life and i believe wherever i have done you do few things but do do, do those few things well yeah i think that's a very good point as well that i think that you are you ready for making some sacrifices as well or what you cannot take along with you and you have to drop a few things uh do you think the youth of today i call them the youth of plenty or you know like the the choices that they have is uh plenty and so they always are confused about making choices so and you work a lot with younger teams so what is your mantra to them because they have plethora of things right then how do you think that they can streamline their life i think two things uh, i always tell i think uh, today's you're right i think uh, today's uh, youngsters have a lot more choices when i grew up i had very limited choice you know and during those days you either had to be a doctor engineer or chartered accountant and if you are not something then you are nothing which is and today i think i think india has changed completely and the other interesting thing is you see a lot of people you know somewhere you know in terms of uh, in a lot of talented people in a lot of fields and you can make those choices and there are opportunities and platforms to make your dreams come true having said that i have just two mantras which i i believe in and i tell a lot of youngsters this first do something and choose a profession or choose something which is a cusp of what you are good at and what you love doing because if you don't do something because it's you know like because it's a peer pressure and a thing to do similarly if you love doing something and you are not good at be let that be your hobby so you actually you know if i and this is something i've been extremely lucky in that whatever i have done in my career or elsewhere it has been always a cusp of something i am good at and i like doing and i love doing it and mm-hmm. which brings me to the second topic you know this famous thing about this work life balance you know people talk about and i think it's very very important work life balance i am a mad person i don't have an out of office so even if i am on a holiday i tend to juggle and i 24/7 looking at my work and i, and I i managed to juggle and i managed to enjoy the holiday i'm not suggesting that people should do that having said that i keep on telling the people that if you really love work then there is that work life balance automatically happens because you then select how to multitask today's world you have to multitask it's a choice and you have to prioritize it's very difficult uh, at it is only not my level even if you work you know at a junior level or at a middle level to say that i am switched off at 5:30 and nothing can happen it's difficult so i think it's a question of how do you manage these things and i think it's quite possible but i think uh, it is very very important having said that that the first mantra which i always believe in that do something focus on something which you love doing and focus on something which you are you know do don't get into and i think you will realize through some discovery process what you are good at and what you love doing it's good to experiment but it's important after some time in life to actually zone on and fix on to something you know and like you said you know the the youth of today or the younger generation has a good support system which probably we didn't have as well to make these multiple choices to take a lot of risks behind us and you know try different things at different times and they are going across somebody who's writing today is probably doing camera tomorrow is probably doing you know something in uh, science tomorrow so i'm just saying there's so much that they can explore and i think this is i keep telling my kids as well that make the most of what you've got in this life don't be confused just try everything possible you never know what falls through so yeah i think that's a good strategy and uh, you also spoke about managing time uh of course uh, you know hearing your story uh, i do not think uh, you know anybody is uh, going to be inspired by saying okay i will go for a holiday and i also juggle work uh, so uh, uh, i need to get back to your family because you say you are able to do it but uh, i need to take a feedback from your wife and i think you have a daughter so let's hear from them what do they have to say <laughs> see i think uh... my wife uh, she also is on a second act for the last 3 4 years but oh, she yeah. has been a banker throughout her life and as i said that and my daughter is uh, she just started work and 
she also i think works at least 65 70 hours a week she's just entered life she has undergraduate she is in consulting so i think i think we understand that they understand and i think the issue is that as i said that whatever you do you maximize so that's what i believe in and uh, i think uh, even now i have been able to manage so i'll give an example we might not take a one month long holiday but we go for three short holidays in the family yeah. so that you know yeah. ensures that you still have your breaks but yeah i mean my work or in our work never we couldn't afford to be out of work maybe three four weeks but can we, we used to take three four you know one week holidays maybe and you know even a long extended weekend so i think we have managed to do that and i think it's quite possible and uh, i think the other thing which is important is that whatever you do give it 100 percent. there's no point dabbling in multiple things and not doing justice to it Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example. I started learning music and uh, I was not, you know, I was not doing that well. In a sense, I was not picking up. So I gave it up for some time. I said, listen, if I do something, I'll do it. I do it well. I just don't want to do it for the heck of doing something. Right. So you gave up completely. Yeah, I was, I was, so I had a, with a teacher who used to come every Sunday, who used to do, you know, we're practicing the keyboard. I started, I did it for three, four years and the last couple of years I've given up. Maybe when I get time, I'll again do it. Because one, one thing I picked up now is we do a lot of, as a family, a lot of binge watching on Saturday nights. Oh, you love know? It. <laughs> and it's like a Saturday night in when we are not going out, which means binge watching till three o'clock, which doesn't, which means that on Sunday, eight o'clock, I need my sleep. I can't have start doing music. So as I said, that whatever you do, do, do it well. And that has been my, otherwise don't do it. So what's your favorite show been? So I think, uh, I mean, I'm waiting for the next season of Crown. I have done, I've done recently. We just watched morning show. I did, which was the other one, this, uh, that hostage thing, that Spanish, I'm forgetting that one, that money Netflix. Heist. Yeah, yeah, Money Heist. And normally we watch it in, just three weekends, we finish everything, you know, and take on something <laughs> else. So I think, uh, as I said, that we watch a lot of, so my daughter is a fan of World War II films. So I've now taken a fascination oh. to see with history. So, so I think we have been, uh, so that to me, that's a nice thing to do. Maybe, I mean, the Saturdays we don't go out and that's something we do it religiously as a family. That, And I, I think it gives a lot more bonding because, you know, that the time spent and of course, thanks to COVID, we were lucky because my daughter was studying in US and she happened to spend a significant amount of time during the COVID you know, time. So I think it's, uh, to me, I think, as I said, family is an extremely important thing. for me. Absolutely. Um, coming back to, you know, uh, my thing on second act, because that's where I want to now, you know, streamline everything right from you know making choices to what you're doing right now and where you want to go so let's uh, come back to your days when you were studying you know and uh, I am happened because I am doesn't happen to everyone as well and it's not about making a choice at that time it is also working towards really getting there um, so how was that it did the upbringing help did the 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 because the IM is the big thing around any which way of all the, you know, people from probably service backgrounds. Uh, and I think you belong to one as well. Or what, how, what is the trajectory which took you probably in your second act or a purpose which you wanted to achieve through IIM? It's, let me tell you, it's not that complicated. It's just been extremely simple. So really? Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> let me just, uh, so I think I'll, uh, if you look at it, I mean, uh, I come from a family where, uh, so my father was a first generation refugee. Okay. So he okay. came from the erstwhile, you know, which was Bangladesh now. And the, the, when the partition happened, they moved in and they were pretty. And also we had no wealth. So he was a striver. So that he went into, he became a bureaucrat. And then the entire family of ours, the earlier generation was either in the state bank or in the government. So I'm the only private sector. Even my cousin is a bureaucrat 
or so you know we're either doctors or so i am the only private sector so called it's not a black sheep but different you know and therefore i think during that time i remember uh, so as i talked about choice my father wanted me to be a doctor i guess it made sense to have one doctor in the family you know bengali is a hypochondriac you know so <laughs> one doctor makes sense so i didn't want to and actually i said no i got into iit and uh, i had a fantastic time there again after iit most of my batch went abroad uh, in you know a lot of the guys are in bay area now so the choice i made was while i was doing getting good grades in my engineering i didn't particularly like i didn't see myself doing a masters in engineering or something and you know during those days i said okay so what do i do i said okay let me take cat and i got into i am so it's not very difficult that when i think perhaps my parents would have been my father or my family would have been happy either they wanted me to go abroad i said no i don't want to go abroad or they wanted me to join civil services which again i said no so as i said that i wanted to something which i thought i am good at nice. and similarly after i am also i thought i will be good at marketing so i went into fmcg so it's been always like that whatever i felt i like doing i ensured i do that i think that's something which and i don't always fall into peer pressure because you know like for example if say investment banking is a fad or uh, during those days of course consulting was not there that much when i started joining but say foreign banks was a fad or something else but i thought i was good in this i like doing it i'll do this so i think there's nothing very complicated nothing is that you know i started thinking i will do get into iit i am so even in iit those days you know you had to get into engineering or medical so therefore okay i don't think i want to be a doctor it's you know and you know six years seven years too much of a slog so let me get into engineering so that's how i made choices and it's not very very evolved huh? the choices are come to think of it was very very simple choice <laughs> but yeah i mean two things i did whatever i decided i slogged for it yeah. so i think there was that discipline and strive that and as i said that was because very simple that i came from a family which uh that was the first generation into work we were doing very well as a family but we lost everything when we came and migrated to you know during the partition so they had nothing to start off with so therefore the values of integrity hard work and strive was actually ingrained and even today even if i have a little bit of wealth i at least lead a reasonably want to lead a sim- simple life i am not into too much of fashion brands and this one but i believe it's okay i mean i read a i won't say completely spartan life but i am not into ostentatious living also because it's okay with i am okay i'm perfectly comfortable in my skin very nice and i think that is uh, something that will also you know sustain uh, many years from here because everything which we have here is not going to stay anyway forever so i think the better it is to just be content and of course the splurge a little bit but of course not go overboard um i think that is also something which is important i want to ask you about loyalty now because 2004 uh, marico happened uh, and it's almost going to be two decades um so in the world of today do you think this is actually something to be proud of or if you meet a person like this because i have worked in an organization also for 19 and a half years so that time it was a moment of pride but when i mentioned that today everybody looks at me to this maybe you never got an opportunity or did you like not think that you're good enough to go somewhere so what is your has anything changed from you know um the thought process what you used to feel about it and now and when you also hire a, you know a lot of new people so i think uh, two things one is you can i think i firmly believe that okay 20 years may be too long but at least in any role or any organization you do you get you know you gain a deep insights or deep engagement on a role or a sector you take you need a bit of time okay but for me i have been doing different roles i you know i came as a head of marketing moved into marketing and sales became an india ceo then became a you know managing director of the company the organization has grown 
so it's been now we are going for the next you know marico 3.0 where from a core we are getting into foods with a lot of digital brands international expansion so i think it's been exciting and every morning i look forward there hasn't been a day or a week maybe sometimes yes i mean when things don't go well you feel okay okay not another day but otherwise more or less i would say 90% of the days i look forward to say that i will do something interesting and different uh having said that yes i mean maybe i am i would have been little risk averse than someone else but i haven't you know ex- explored entrepreneurship or doing something on my own but let me tell you in today's world there is enough time to do that because you know it's not that all entrepreneurs have to be in their 20s if you look at us today a lot of entrepreneurship starts even in the 50s so i think there is enough opportunity for doing that and i would definitely t- perhaps attempt or do something different you know in the next 4 5 years you know I definitely i will try to do something different and i think uh, the world has become exciting far more exciting with the entry of digital with the entry of so many startups with the and therefore i'm sure there are opportunities and i have seen a lot of uh, you know of my friends who have started doing something different and is the second innings or second act whatever you call it and i'm sure i'm going to do something and i look forward to because for me you know it's i can't see myself peacefully retiring and fishing somewhere you know i can't see myself doing that and and i i hope to work at least keep on as long as you know i am healthy and doing and doing something and contributing to society contributing to the world great so talking about health uh i would say talking about well being so what is your mantra on well being for yourself so i must not advise people because i am not the best in class in that <laughs> uh, because i am not a you know i would say a gym freak or something i try to maintain basic common sensical things on health and wellness but to me the biggest thing about also health is is i think uh, of course other than self control on food and other things is that i would say also happiness i think health and lack of stress and happiness is linked to health and i try to remain uh, happy i try to ensure that i don't take stress for example the moment i come home i try my best not to carry the stress from work although i am still maybe attending calls or attending emails as i said i am 24 by 7 available i am still famous for responding to emails at 10:30 in the night but still i try to ensure that i am happy and i think to me the biggest happiness is i get in my family spending time with that but them and so therefore i think to a lot of extent the health or wellness comes from not only proper eating proper diet uh, but also it it is directly linked to how do you manage stress and happiness so coming to now your teams because of course what you filter as a person reflects in your professional life as well so what are the things that you take care of you know when you're nurturing teams in the organization especially we have all gone through very difficult times uh, so anything that has been a self reflection that you have brought forward anything from the a perspective of looking after your colleagues um, they speak very high of you but i wanted to know from you what are the things that you actually bring uh, to make them a part of this beautiful culture so i think uh, i have certain uh principles or mantras the first thing i believe leaders should create more leaders and not followers so i think my biggest happiness comes when you know how many people i have mentored or be in my team have become cxos or ceos mm-hmm. and to give you an example while everybody knows some other companies as so called ceo factories i think we are a mini ceo factory i think 80% or more of my people who worked with me between 2005 and 2012 have become ceos to me that's the biggest happiness yeah. uh, the second thing is i am very very clear i dry i give a lot of empowerment with empowerment comes a lot of responsibility and accountability so i don't do any parenting in office parenting is at home i do, and so therefore i give a very interesting analogy i will give them resources i will give them a very nice motor boat but they have to drive the boat they have to ride the boat or row the boat there will be a lifeguard on the beach but i am not going to swim or row with them and i think that is something is a 
part of growing up is that i expect adults to work with me and i think it is okay to fail and number 3 is i think one of the things uh, i believe in is important to uh, please come with a problem and a solution and use me as a sounding board and not as a don't you know i encourage people to find their own solutions and find their own problems i be a guide rather than solving everything so i don't believe in spoon feeding because then if i say that i want to create more leaders then i don't want to spoon feed them they will permanently become followers and i am okay with dissent as long as there is logic and i it's okay with me i think the other thing which is uh, important working with me is a uh, people who are self driven who have their own hunger and number 2 is ability to take high speed high quality is independent i like people independent because i have been fortunate enough that from the promoter i got huge amount of empowerment and independence and i value that independence because with that independence and empowerment only then you can prosper and shine very well said and i totally can i uh, you know see a lot of people growing along like you said and i'm thinking okay maybe i should have joined your company in 2007 8 when uh, you know and i would be a ceo too quickly <laughs> but that's true and i think uh, your people um, of course i have now been speaking to a lot of them by the way um so i know that they are very very happy and kudos to companies like you leaders like you who are creating more leaders empathy seems to be a tool that you of course have um but like you said you can only give them something but they have to make the best use of it the platform is theirs and that also it's difficult i mean you know not everybody empowers them the way probably barico is doing or with your foresight it is happening i also hear that you're moving to um, in a big way to inclusion diversity do you want to absolutely know? yeah because i think there's a lot of focus um on that yeah i think it's uh, to me a uh, diversity i think is an enabler of growth and it is not about ticking the box and i think one of the things we made clear in our company's uh, diversity and inclusion journey is that people have to experience inclusion and as regards diversity also it's not about affirmative action it is about creating the right enabling environment for diversity to thrive and uh, this is something which we have been doing it's a journey i think we still have a job to do but i think uh, whatever uh, we have been doing in terms of we have you know some of the metrics we have taken in terms of whether in terms of the hiring in terms of grooming a uh, senior talent uh, i think and creating an environment for it because i think a lot of people and i've seen this with a lot of my you know that in in india or elsewhere people drop out you know as you enter a certain age band or a certain this one because of the other pressures you know whether it's kids growing up or whatever you know uh, parents going old and then so i think the question is how does the uh, organization provide a uh, enabling you know environment the one of the good things i think that came about this this hybrid working model post covid i think is also enables diversity because i think as an organization we have moved to 100% hybrid model and of course uh, senior leaders like us we come to work every day but a lot of people uh, are working on a hybrid model depending on their roles and that actually offers them that kind of a you know flex in terms of working sometimes out of home sometimes out of office and which also in some way you know en- enables you know this diversity because unfortunately india that as we are getting into nuclear families as the pressures happen and all the other things happen that you know that support systems are not great and therefore sometimes uh, the other thing about diversity is just not about gender it's about thought it is about one yeah. of the things we have done encouraged in international businesses how do you localize talent a lot of you know mncs a lot of you know international business work with expats so one of the things that is also diversity ability to to grow a uh, localization so i'm very proud that uh, in vietnam for example we not only have 45% women in our top team but also it's a we have been able to localize at one point in time it was full of expats the same thing we have done in some of our other countries like bangladesh so it's about also you know the third diversity of course is 
as you know, in a lot of companies, this MBAs. And if you look at the kind of startups and the kind of digital brands which we have and we have acquired, I think we are looking at different sets of people, not the cookie cutter. In fact, I believe that too many MBAs in a startups actually will ensure that it, you know, it is not the most impactful thing, but have people who have different backgrounds. Now, if I look at it, it takes time, but that's another diversity, which is also thought diversity. I think nobody has explained diversity to me the way you have. Uh, and really, I appreciate that because uh, when we talk about diversity, mostly it starts and ends with women uh, leadership, uh, you know, in, in the company. But um, I love the thought process. I love the way that you're looking at diversity. It, it's completely beautiful from localization to making it like, you know, innovative and getting brighter ideas. And I'm sure they, there's also a lot of work in the community that you're doing also because of this thought process as well, because Mariko is engaging themselves in, uh, I think, uh, two very solid communities. And I want you to also talk about those because from there it comes the second act of Mariko itself, I would say, uh, you know, um, like a give back to the society. So what do you exactly do that? So I think uh, it started off with, I think, uh, Harsh, who believed in the concept of con conscious capitalism, which we then ingrained in the organization. And you know, if you look at the concept of conscious capitalism, it talks about if you do good to all your stakeholders, good happens to you. And even before the CSR regulation came, I think we started work on it. So we started, if you look at the Marico Innovation Foundation started, but more than anything else, one of the places where we have done fantastic work, which I'm really proud of is the work with coconut farmers. You know, we disintermediate earlier, we used to buy 100% of our copra through brokers and the intermediaries used to keep a lot of their margins. We started disintermediating by buying directly from farmers. And interestingly, we were paying the same amount which we are paying the broker. So the entire margin started getting retained by the farmers. And today, I think 55% of our procurement is directly from these farmers. So I think this is called fair trade. It is the way. And today we are also working with a lot of farmers to improve productivity in line with the government's thinking of doubling farmers' income. There's a project called Project Kalpavriksha. Okay. Similarly, for a brand like, uh, there's a brand called Shanti Amla, which we uh, put a certain percentage of our profits into educating of the girl child. And we have realized it's just not mere education because people drop out. It is mm -hmm. about English education so that they become employable. I think to me, that's the bigger thing rather than you know, just you know, uh, teaching them something or getting them into school. It's about making them employable. So this entire program is about you know, teaching them English, how, they, how do they talk? And then now we are talking about skill building. So I think this is something which, and the other interesting thing is we encourage a lot of volunteers from within Marico to work in some of our programs. Like whether it's uh, scaling up some of the Innova, Marico Innovation Founded Foundation startups or doing some of the education programs. And I'm very proud that a lot of people are involved. And one of the biggest things I love about this current generation is their, they believe in purpose, they believe in sustainability. They want to live a better you know, future for the next generation in terms of plastic wastage, useless paper. So I get constantly scolded by my daughter when I throw out some paper or I'm not <laughs> recycling something or I'm wasting power. You know? So I think the new generation is far more and they have huge pride in working with brands with a purpose, organizations with a purpose and organizations with sustainable or promote sustainability. And I'm extremely proud that, as you know, that in Marico is one of the leaders in ESG and driving sustainability. Yeah. So in the recent uh, Crystal ESG study index among the FMCG, uh, we came as number one. And it's and we have a, therefore, I think we have still a go, uh, still a long way to go. It's a journey. Whether it's diversity or sustainability, there's a journey and a long way to go. But I think I'm quite happy at the progress we are making, but we still have to do it every, every year. The yeah, bar keeps on changing. I think you've started very well. You're doing some great work. And I love one sentence that you often use is to learn, earn, and return. And I think that is something, I think that's what you believe personally. And that also reflects in the organization. So do you want to give a little bit how this was coined? What is the thought behind it? 
No, I think it started off, I remember Harsh talking about, I think this was, he picked up somewhere that first 25 years of life you learn and then you earn and then return. In today's world, I think you can do together at least everything. And I think learning never stops. Earning might stop, but I think returning one needs to do continue to the society. But earning is also happening now. There are various, like you were talking about digitalization. There is a lot of uh, movement in creating something which is probably you can't see, but you can, you know, feel yeah. it part in, in your brain that, okay, I, I'm the owner of whatever. So my son just uh, took a workshop on NFT because um, through our platform, Second Act, we also encourage youth to, you know, bring out something that probably uh, something that they want to learn from their own peer group. So I encouraged him, I said, you all the time talk about this topic, it goes over my head, but why don't you, and you know, bring it on. And you won't believe there were people, CFOs of companies who were sitting there trying to understand from him, you know, who were like 20, 30 years ahead of, you know, uh, experience from him, uh, just trying to get the concepts right. And so many questions and so much. And this generation is, like you said, completely amazing. You can learn so much from them. They're so aware of like, you know, everything. It's totally amazing. So I love the purpose bit. And do you um, have, so coming to aligning your personal and your professional purpose, do you think that there is something that Mariko does intentionally or it is something that automatically transfers once you join the company? Is there something that you do on the purpose bit? So I think uh, culturally, there are certain unique things about Mariko. I think uh, first, it's a very a political objective place. Uh, there's a lot of trust, trust and transparency. Uh, there is what I call, you know, basic values of integrity. And I think uh, this thing about what we definitely ingrain is that if you keep on doing the good things, good things happen to you. Hmm. Uh, so as long as outcomes are important, but you must do outcomes the right way. Hmm. So like, for example, in today's world, you have to manage polarity. Like you have to manage the short term and the long term. You can't say that quarters are not important. I will only manage five-year plans. You have to manage speed with excellence. So there's a concept of polarity management. But as long as one of the beliefs we practice in Mariko don't compromise the long term to achieve the short term. Yeah. And yeah. that at least gets ingrained in it. And this thing about if you do good, good happens to you is, you know, given the very, very open, transparent culture and objective culture, the same thing happens for careers that if you do good, you are taken care of. Hmm. And that is the interesting reason why in my team, there are three people who have left Mariko because they didn't have a proper role. They were fast trackers and come back. So Mariko has perhaps the largest number of people who return back to Mariko. Wow. That's commendable. That shows that, um, you know, you they have strong, the company has strong values that pulls them back. So that's very beautiful. So coming back to you now, Shoguto, what is your second act in all of this? Where is Shoguto? What is he trying to do as a person? And where is his second act line? I must say that uh, I've started thinking about it. It's not yet evolved. Mm -hmm. But I need to do another podcast, maybe one, two years down the line to <laughs> so perhaps articulate this. Right. But I think I've started thinking about it. But uh, so I think, as I said, that I think two, three things I will. I think it, I want to continue to be very active, continue to add value, but definitely I want to pick up a hobby, hobby and, and definitely write a book. So these two things are planned. Definitely. Wow. And a book on what? See, a book on my experiences and this will perhaps uh, help people. And it's not about management lessons. I think there are too many books on management lessons. It's more about practical experiences in life, you know? Mm. And uh, mm. <clears throat> so I think I would do that. Uh, do I have, I mean, uh, and I think I want to, I love traveling. Uh, I would, I've traveled a lot in life. So I think there are still some parts of my bucket list, I think, which has got a lot of them got delayed because of COVID, but now things are opening up. So I, I, I think there are lots of things to do. So a great, what a, 
lovely time I had with you. Uh, I'm sure that there are a few things that people didn't know about you, which came out in the interview. Uh, I have just few rapid fire, like sure. to, you know, <laughs> catch you unawares maybe. Uh, so tell me one person or book or quotation that you always feel that can motivate you. So I think person, I would say, not a person, but a group, business group. I think Tata's, I think I hold them in an extreme gold standard. And I think whatever they do, whenever I, I, I really, I'm extremely, you know, admire the business, business group. And whether it's a GRD Tata or Ratan Tata and the, the current, you know, this one, I think Tata is a group. I think there's something which I really admire. And it makes me very proud given the globalization which they have done for India, brand India. One thing that you fear, Fear health. Hmm. Right. Uh, one, one of your favorite dishes. Very difficult, but I can tell you my comfort food is khichdi. You know, okay. at the end of a bad day or some stressful day, a khichdi or a chawal dal is a comfort food. You know, the kind of music you uh, can lift your day with. So I am now, uh, nowadays I also listen to all kinds of, uh, so Coldplay is my favorite, but I now listen to a lot of techno stuff, you know, especially I remember during COVID times, that was the mood lifter after a hard day's work when two, you know, two months we had to do a lot of housework. You know, and at the end <laughs> of the day, you were like, you, you did eight hours of meetings, three hours of trying to do things. And then, you know, I used to, uh, listen to a lot of music but and as i said that i i like new music and i like to adapt to some of the music my daughter listens to it you know used to earlier appear greek or latin i'm trying to you know while i'm a slightly old school still love adele and coldplay but and I love abba but you know i i'm actually beginning to like some of the techno stuff i don't like rap but you don't okay <laughs> all right and the last question is um are you feeling glad that these rapid fires are over or uh, can i continue with more <laughs> no just kidding you can. I mean, it's fine i mean it's <laughs> no i the last question of course is um if i want to turn your life back 20 years from now what is that one different thing that you would do I think I should I I I should have tried it uh, my hand at entrepreneurship maybe. Oh ah, yeah, nice. Yes, I think everybody should. There's so much learning in there. I feel um, which I'm also learning now. I could have created my own you know personal care or a food brand myself. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. So what a pleasure to have you on Second Act podcast. Um, there is so much. Uh, that I have taken back myself from here. And I'm sure the people who are hearing us um, have got a glimpse of a person that you are beyond the MD for the Marocco Industries. Uh, may you uh, discover your second act, many second acts, and um, then we will meet again in maybe a few months. And I want to know more about that and the book that you will intend to write. I'm very curious about that as well. So thanks again for this time. It was beautiful. And um, I cannot tell you how, how honored this channel will be to have somebody like you here. Really. I mean, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. I really enjoyed doing this. Thank you. Thank you.